I recently got married and I catch myself constantly daydreaming about our wedding instead of focusing on my projects and the things on my get-to-do list. If you find yourself in the same shoes, struggling to focus on a task for a longer period of time, then stick around to find out the best productivity tips I've learned from reading The Personal MBA by Josh Kaufman. I'm Sophie from Minimalist Ways, and today I'm gonna share five productivity tips with you that help me get back on track and stop daydreaming about our wedding instead of working on my projects. The first tip is to use the Pomodoro technique. According to Josh, multitasking is a myth that has been proven to be ineffective by several neurological studies. What actually happens during multitasking is your attention rapidly switching from one task to the other. But this prevents you from getting into that so-called flow state studied by Mihai Chiks and Mihai, which takes approximately 10 to 30 minutes to reach. The Pomodoro technique, which was named after those tomato-shaped kitchen timers, is one of the most effective productivity tools I've ever discovered. So this is how it works. When you don't feel like doing something, just use a kitchen timer, a timer on your phone or a Pomodoro app to force yourself to do something for just 25 minutes. 25 minutes is short enough to be doable, but long enough to get you into a flow state. If you still haven't been able to accomplish anything after this time, you can give yourself permission to stop and take a break. What normally happens to me though, is that after 10 to 15 minutes, I feel so productive that I usually take an extra 5 to 10 minutes after my timer is up, before I take a short 5 minute break. An extra tip is to use a piece of paper that you can use as a brain dump. It is totally normal to get distracted, especially at the beginning. Whenever you catch yourself having a distracting thought, just put it down on a piece of paper and get back to it in your break. Interestingly, I always remember to do the laundry or answer someone's message when I start my Pomodoro. But that's okay, just get back to it after you've finished with your more challenging tasks. The second tip is batching. Have you ever felt like you have to do so much that you're switching from one task to the other to try to keep everything under control? There is a reason why there are thousands of articles about the batching technique. And that is because it works. For example, I travel quite a lot by bus between Budapest and Vienna. Instead of trying to do everything at once, I take all those three hours of travel time to write. That can be writing scripts for my channel, journaling or even just replying to emails. Many writers take the first couple of hours of their day for uninterrupted writing as well. But you can do the same thing with phone calls. Many people hate making phone calls but that doesn't mean that we can avoid them forever. Batching multiple phone calls for one time of the day gives you an advantage as you can still have the energy from completing the first call to keep going. Many experts also recommend to do creative work during your prime time, which is before noon for me, and to do tasks that require less brain capacity outside of your prime time. This could be answering messages, taking care of administrative tasks, and doing chores. The third tip from the book is to keep a most important tasks list. This list should be limited to maximum two to three things, which are non-negotiable. Even if you were not able to complete all of your tasks for the day, if you did your MITs, you were productive. The advantage of setting MITs is that it helps you maintain a mono-ideal state by setting priorities. MITs give you permission to say no to interruptions that are less important. For example, the day I wrote this script for the video you are watching, I had two MITs on my daily schedule. Finishing this script for you and making an important phone call which I had to do before noon. After I was done with these, I still had to do a lot of other things, but I knew that my priorities for the day had already been taken care of. So tip number four is to set a deadline to avoid Parkinson's law. If you haven't heard of Parkinson's law before, Here it is in a nutshell. Work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. What this means is that no matter how much time you have for a task that you need to finish, you will always prolong the time until it's actually due. According to Josh, we plan based on how much time we have and when the deadline approaches, we start to make choices and trade-offs to do what must be done to complete the task by the deadline. Parkinson's law is best used as a hypothetical question. 
Ask yourself the question, what would it look like if you finish the project on a very short deadline? If you had to finish a huge project in a day, how would you go about doing it? If you take time to answer the question, you will discover techniques or approaches you can use to get the work done in less time. Setting a deadline for projects or important tasks which by default don't have one can get you where you want to be much faster. So just remember Parkinson's law. If you don't set a limit on your available time, your work will expand to fill it all. And the final big idea is to set positive, immediate, concrete and specific goals. So what does that look like? If you have a goal like, I want to start a business or finish my degree, try to be as specific about that goal as possible by trying to answer questions like where, when and why. So here is my example. By the end of this year, I want to publish at least 12 videos on my channel to keep my resilience even when my motivation is lacking. Find a goal that is in your locus of control. For example, I didn't say how many subscribers I want to reach because I have no influence over the number of people who find me and subscribe to my channel. But what I have control over is the work I put into growing the channel by uploading regularly. If you don't have clear goals, you're making it difficult for your mind's automatic planning system to find ways to get what you want. Therefore, setting goals is key. Well-formed goals achieve two things. They help with visualization, making what you want look achievable, and they motivate you to do the work to achieve it. A goal is no more than a statement that clarifies what you want to accomplish. A clear goal makes it easy for your brain to find solutions for achieving it. Not convinced yet? Maybe this quote from the book by Steve Pavlina will help. Setting a wake goal is like walking into a restaurant and saying, I'm hungry, I want some food. You will stay hungry until you order something. Hi, I'm Sophie and I hope you enjoyed today's top 5 productivity tips from the Personal MBA by Josh Kaufman. If you're interested in the book, you will find a link to it in the description, as well as the Pomodoro tool I use to stay productive. Let me know down in the comments below which productivity tricks help you to stay productive when you feel unmotivated or distracted. Thank you guys for watching and if you are interested in other videos like this, then don't forget to leave me a like and to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.